Figuring out my ideal weekly PhD schedule took some time. PhDs typically set their own schedule, which is good and bad. With constant changes, obstacles, and deadlines, it took a lot of trial and error and going through different seasons of highs and lows to perfect what I think will get you through in the most ideal way. When it was crunch time and I felt like I was drowning, wrapping up multiple projects in my last years, a few things helped me survive and kept me dialed into the bigger picture. Number one, break down your long-term goals that you're working towards. If you want to know what you need to do in one week or one day of the week, you'll have to have a bigger picture sense of what your quarter or your few weeks or your month needs to look like. And that means you need to have an idea of what your long-term goals are in order to have milestones along the way. So make a list of one to four major goals for the year or for the few months, and that will help you get to your smaller goals. More on this and monthly plans in my one-year timeline video coming up. Number two, decide what types of tasks you need to do daily or weekly or every other week to achieve these goals. For example, reading two articles in a week or day, writing one page every morning, planning or documenting experiments daily. Really think about how much time you realistically need to allot to each type of task. Number three, time block. You might have heard of this before, but put chunks of time in a calendar that you can visualize either on paper or on your computer. I use Google Calendar as well as to do lists on Notion and think about what time of day is best for you to do each of the tasks, but specifically each types of the tasks. For example, if you feel that you concentrate better in the morning for hard thinking, you can assign some difficult literature, summarizing, reading, or writing during that time. I like to do stuff where I'm not thinking a lot in the afternoon, so that's when I'll assign my experiment time. Our brains work better this way to sit with the same kind of task for a block of time, specifically when our minds and bodies prefer to work on that. It is the most efficient way to go about your to-do list. Another thing is if you are the type of person that prefers to get the hard task out of the way so you're not thinking about it the rest of the day, or if you want to have small tasks at the beginning of the day to build momentum, make sure you really figure out what specific times of day work for you to do each type of task so that whenever you have this task come up, you know the ideal time to work on it, and then it's already going to be set and in your schedule for the week. So for example, my weekly schedule, I knew that to keep on task with my goals, I needed to do one to two hours of imaging sessions in the afternoon. And so these for me are mindless and I want to do these later in the afternoon when I'm most tired. It just takes setting things up and being present and watching how things go. And so not a lot of thinking. And then two two hour morning sessions for sequencing analysis. So really hard critical thinking. And then I wanted to keep up with reading and writing, but it's a big mental hurdle. So so I wanted to do short sessions of 30 minutes and so I tried to do two days of 30 minute reading sessions and three days of figure making or writing sessions so that again would be in the morning ideally like right after I get up and get ready just so I can get it out of the way before getting distracted with any other random tasks or people that need me and the rest of the time I didn't always specify because it changed a lot but I had it set for experiments animal work and morning planning sessions of course any other obligations that come up can go fill in in the rest of the spots but I had these as weekly reoccurring tasks so my big tip is to input it into your automated calendar so I use Google Calendar you can use your Apple calendar or whatever you can have this as a weekly repeated calendar and or plan at the beginning of your work week to make sure you'll make time for each of the ideal tasks because if you're consistent then that should lead you to your ultimate goal you can fill in the rest of the time with your experiments or obligations where you're not specifically time blocking the consistent ideal tasks. So make sure to leave some empty time as well for unexpected things that come up, hiccups or certain tasks that take longer than you think, which always happens. You then keep track of how this works out for you for one to two weeks and then reassess. 
It's difficult to estimate how long things will take, but that's why going through this process will help you figure out how you're spending your time. I'm a little <laughs> anal about it and put everything in my calendar so I can visualize how my time is being spent because that is comforting for me. But again, you can figure out how you spend your time, where you can better spend it, and what you need to focus more on. Alter your schedule accordingly. Say if you need an extra two hours a week to do a tedious manual image quantification, or if you can delegate tasks to an undergraduate or another colleague who is better at that technique than you. Then you can move that to a lower priority or can give it less time. Okay, next you wanna reflect on whether these tasks are actually helping you reach your monthly or quarterly goals because that's the point of doing these in the first place. The PhD is a long haul, so this should help you inch towards progress over time with consistency. I must say, if you find yourself not reaching these weekly goals, that's okay. Give yourself grace and every week may be different than the next. It often is in research. And that may mean a completely different schedule. This should just be a guideline to help keep yourself on track if it's difficult to prioritize your workload or if it's overwhelming or to stay on task with goals without getting sidetracked by the million other things you have to do. I often had to move time blocks around on my calendar, but if I ever had a morning without any specific tasks, I could fill in my time making sure to chip away at those weekly ideal tasks because those are often the ones that got forgotten. The weekly schedule will be very dependent on the season you're in and the goals for that season. As a PhD student, this could be planning for advancement exams, first year exams, preliminary exams, whatever you call it, manuscripts, collaborations, conference presentations, writing your thesis, writing a chapter, etc. So it's important to reassess often and especially every quarter, ideally every month. I would do this usually like a, a week or two into the month once I realize it's a new month. <laughs> but this is just a general outline of how I was able to structure my weeks in an organized way where I knew that following the structure would help me towards finishing my thesis. Sometimes an important experiment or deadline is gonna need all your attention for a month, for a few months, a year, and that's fine, of course. Part of the PhD training is learning how to constantly adapt and adjust your priorities based on the current and long-term needs and apply that to how you spend your time and execute accordingly. Always ask yourself, will this task move me any closer to my goals? My goals. Not his goals, not, not their goals, my goals. <laughs> to finishing this project. My project, this one, that is going to graduate me. <laughs> to publishing this paper that's important to you. To writing my thesis, to graduating. Your time is valuable, so the hope <laughs> is to not spend too much time doing things that aren't gonna move you closer to these very important things. Everyone will need things from you. So think about which of your weekly tasks, monthly goals, and quarterly milestones are non-negotiables. This is your degree, project, and journey. Obviously, I didn't keep to my weekly schedule every week, but it was always home-based for when I felt lost in my to-do list. But this type of overwhelm can also lead to burnout if we don't take care of ourselves. It's far too common in grad school, so don't be afraid to watch my video on how I deal with burnout as a grad student. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Inch towards prod- mm, obviously. Not obvious, but maybe? Mm.